Blessed are the people who know the sound of the shofar. In the light of your countenance, so Yahweh shall they walk. Baruch atayad and I Eloheinu, melech ha'olam, asher kitshiyanu b'mistato v'tivanu, lishmoa chol shofar. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and has commanded us to hear the voice of the shofar. <laughs>
church no more when we come to our King. Amen. Y'all may be seated. And Shabbat Shalom. We just want to welcome everybody here today. We've got Brother Hans, he's here with his lovely wife, and so he's going to be ministering to us in a little while. And so uh, we're just going to open up with prayer, and we'll start with our Shema and all that, make sure we got plenty of time for him to minister and, and meet the needs of the people. Amen. So, Father, we do just come to you as we were singing. We're just so thankful for your son, Yeshua. This is the reason why we're here. We're here to lift him up. We're here to lift him up, Father. We're here to lift you up in Yeshua's name. Father, we just pray that as we honor and we bless you in song and dance and the ministry and the word, and Father, that you would bless our time together because you've already set apart this day and blessed it from creation. So, Father, with that, I just pray that everything that we do is a sweet incense offering that rises from this place. And, Father, that you would take a deep breath and you would be pleased with your people. And in turn, Father, that if there's needs to be met today, and I'm sure that they are, Father, that you would in turn just send your blessings down like a blanket, like a cloud, as you, how you covered Israel when they were in the desert. And, Father, that you would cover this place and you would cover your people. So, Father, we're here to honor you. All the things that happened to us in this last week are behind us. And Father, we're looking to a, ahead to a new week. And Father, all of the deliverances and all of the victories. Father, we know, Father, that the victory is ours because the battle is yours. And Father, we stand on that promise and we thank you, Father, for it. And everybody says, Amen and Amen. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Shema Yisrael Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. You shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Are you ready, Weston? You can start it, and then we'll do the other two. Weston's going to read from his new Bible that he has. 
The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his, in his way. Psalms 37 and verse 23. Woo! Good job. Good job. Isaiah 54, 13. All your children be taught of Yahweh, and the well-being of your children be great. Amen. Jeremiah? Deuteronomy 32, 46 and 47. Set your minds and hearts on the word that Elohim commands you, that you may command them to your children, that they may be watchful to do all the words of the Torah. For it is not an empty and worthless trifle for you. It is your very life. Deuteronomy 32, 46, 47. All right, Scarlett's going to do the Abba prayer. Point your hand to the treasure chest. Abba, Lord, you are true, true, true name. Amen. Amen. All of us together. Do you want to say it? Yes. Say Abba. Abba. Open their Open your eyes. Do your, your truth. In Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Good job. Everyone, point your hands to the treasure chest and all together say, Abba, open their eyes to see your truth. In Yeshua's name, amen. And all together say, by his grace, not one will be lost. Amen. May Yahweh protect and defend you. May he always shield. Sabbath prayer. Let's praise our King. There's none like Him. Amen. Let's do it. raging storm the one who walks upon the sea earth and heaven are your own yet you're watching over me how majestic is your name there is none like you There is none like you, none like our King. Together we proclaim the power of your name. There is none like you. Who can stand before your throne? Your kingdom will forever reign. So we will live to song of praise to the ancients of day. There is none like you.
I've searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise, treasures that fade, never enough. No. And you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Hey, yeah. oh, there's nothing better than you. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness and my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Oh, nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. 
King, nothing is better than you. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph And my God will never fail No, my God will never fail And I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you and I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord For the battle 
that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. We declare. This is how I fight my battles. 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 And it looks like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And it looks like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles.
The Father was showing me, actually the last two songs, it had a theme of praise about being on your knees and lifting up your hands. And we all know when we lift up our hands in praise, that we're giving glory, we're giving honor, right? But what else he showed me is, what else is this? If I, have, I can't hold the mic and hold both hands up, but if I buy it like this, that's surrender, right? That's universal. Why is that a sign of surrender? Because I can't shoot you, I can't harm you if my hands are away from my weapons. I can't drive the car with my hands are in the air. I can't fly the plane when my hands are in the air. Part of our worship is letting go of our control and letting him fly the plane, drive the car. Amen.
sing from your word, you are on a benediction. Let it bless your people, Father. Let it be something that we're praying over each other, that it would resonate over this congregation. For a body, Father, that is together is so much stronger than separated. We desire unity, Father. Cohesiveness, gelling together, Father. Knowing that with all of our differences, with all of our our different purposes, that you've got us working all together for your good. Let us, Father, be that servant that's faithful, Father, that's awake at that midnight watch, that 
servant that is faithful that you can leave and you can trust and know that they're watching over you and watching over what you have and what you have us in care of. So I know, Father, in this prayer that is one body and with one voice we desire to be together in one voice bringing you praise. Even though it's many voices, Father, you can sense the unity. And we just ask that it would be a pleasing aroma to you, Father. That with fancy music or without any, Father, just our voices lifting praise to you. would be enough. That, Father, even, even in situations it doesn't have to be accompanied by beautiful music. But it doesn't get any more beautiful than your children singing Kadosh, Kadosh, Holy is our King. So we stand here, Father, as children of you doing just that. Honoring your name with our lips with our mouths, Father, with our bodies, raising our hands in surrender while lifting you up. We just seal this time, Father, of worship and praise in your name. Thank you for your presence in this place, for the way that I'm sure you have touched lives, Father, that we may not know about, we may never get to hear about. But we can stand here knowing we did our part that we entered into your presence and you worked amongst your people. Right here in this place, right there on the other side of the camera lens as those that watch at home can feel your Ruach flow and your spirit can touch them, heal them, change them, create totally new paradigms. We pray for those. We pray all this in the precious name of Yeshua, our Messiah and our King. And everybody said with one voice, amen and amen. Thank you, Father. All together. You shall say before Yahweh your Elohim, I have removed the sacred portion from my house and also have given it to the Levite and the alien, the orphan and the widow, according to all your commandments which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed or forgotten any of your commandments. I have not eaten of it while mourning, nor have I removed any of it while I was unclean nor offered any of it to the dead. I have listened to the voice of Yahweh my Elohim. I have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel and the ground which you have given us, a land flowing with milk and honey as you swore to our fathers. Amen. <laughs> Baruch Adonai HaMivarak Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Baninikol HaAmin Benetan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Bless Yahweh, the Blessed One. Blessed is Yahweh, the Blessed One, for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Yah, giver of the Torah. Amen. I just want to welcome Hansi back. I know that uh, he's been in this area uh, doing his evangelistic work, you know, for this month. And so as, as he's ready for us and whatever the Father has for him for us, just continue to be praying for him and his wife and his ministry. You know, they live in Texas, and uh, they got out right before the storm. But I was talking to his wife, and he's talking about one of the, uh, their children happened to be in there, and so they had a couple of nights or so without power. So anyway, uh, I don't know if he was fleeting the flood or what he was doing, but anyway, I'll let him minister to us uh, whatever the Father has on his heart today. Amen? Thank Pastor Mark. Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you one thing. I travel around so much, but I don't think I've... Been in a worship session like this morning. Would you give this team up here just a nice big thank you? Wow. You guys really heard from 
from the Father this morning. I promise you that. That was incredible. I actually want to just pray a blessing over you and pray that Yahweh will bless you in all your areas with your talents and that it'll, it'll not just stay right here. It'll just go all over the airways and that people will get healed and set free and delivered through the music because that is possible. I don't know if you realize that, but there are people that sometimes you can't pray for them and they just listen to music and, and, they, and, and you get set free. And I'm not just saying this because I have to say this. I'm a musician myself. My wife has got a music degree, and we know what, what anointing is with, with, with music. And this morning was really, really one of those special mornings. I just want to thank you guys so much for that. Thank you, thank you for listening to the Lord and just doing what he told you to do. Amen. Well, it's good to be back. Thank you so much for inviting us. What a year. <laughs> I thought last year was bad, but this year was just started off. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. All I know is, is what we're saying. He's for us. <laughs> He's not against us. And it doesn't matter what happens. doesn't matter who's in government. who doesn't matter who's president. It doesn't matter who's what. My faith is not in them. My faith is in Yahweh. That is who my faith is in. That's who I trust. But I, I, I hear that um, all of us have gone through a lot of stuff, the whole of 2020, and even in 2021, this, these two months. Just a good a report. I went for my PET scans every three months last year. They, they tell me I have to, to, to do that. So I said, okay, just to prove you right and that God is right and that he told me that he's healed me. All four of the PET scans are clean and stuff. So there is nothing. Thank you for your continuous prayer for me. And um, I don't do it because I'm afraid. I do it because they tell me to do it. So if they tell me to do it, and that, that's okay. You know, the insurance pays for it. So I, I just keep on proving them wrong that, 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 that if they think that there's something there, you know. So the cancer is gone, but now the COVID showed its big fat head out there. If you have your Bibles before we start, thank you so much, Holy Spirit, that you will help me right now, that I bring the word to the people, that they will hear the word, because this word, Yahweh, is the truth, and it will set us free. Help us today just to get some practical insights into the Word and help you to preach through the Holy Spirit and let them hear through the ears of the Holy Spirit, not their flesh, so they can understand the Word. I pray that in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Turn your Bibles, if you have your Bible with you, to the book of John. John. My birth name is Johannes, and in English, that's John. So they've taken their last of Johannes and they've book of John, chapter 11. Okay, chapter 11. Just look at me quickly. How many of you have really been through some hard times for the last year or two? Or that, that, I mean, all of us, I think, have gone through a lot of bad stuff happening. If it's not with you, then it's with your family, or maybe your finances, or maybe your job, or whatever it, it is. And me going through that cancer and the COVID and, you know, people canceling you because of the COVID and stuff, and I thought to myself, all of us is going to hear some bad news some or other time in our lives. Nobody is immune against that. Somewhere time you will hear some bad news. Your father passed away. Well, you know he's going to heaven, but it's still bad news. So how do we treat bad news in the life of a believer, of a Christian? So I looked around a little bit through the whole Bible, and I saw what happened to Paul and Peter and Abraham and Moses and all those guys. But then I found 
that the best example of somebody that heard bad news was Saul Yeshua. And in chapter 11 of the book of John, there was a man named Lazarus who was sick, who was from Bethany, read with me, the village of Miriam and her sister Martha. This was the same Miriam who anointed the master with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was sick. So the sisters sent word to Yeshua saying, Master, the one who you love is sick. Now I looked this up, and Lazarus did not have a little headache. He didn't have a sinus infection. The man was going to die from the sickness. And if you love somebody, because they say Yeshua loved this man, Lazarus. When Yeshua heard this, it wasn't good news. Oh, Lazarus is dead, uh, uh, sick. He's going to die. Well, that's okay. <laughs> it was bad news. It, thank heavens it wasn't something about Yeshua or his mother or his father or one of his brothers. It was somebody that he loved that he heard was going to die. They were so sick. So I said, I thought, let me just read this in a different way. How did Yeshua react when he heard bad news? How are you going to react when you hear bad news? Are you going to react like the normal hypocrite Christian will react? Well, why is God doing this to me? Why did this happen to me and not to the other guy? Look how he's living and look how I'm living. And we start whining and questioning and complaining towards Yahweh. And we say, we don't understand what's going on. Why is this happening to us? Are we going to fall on the ground, start kicking and screaming like a little spoiled brat? Because no, nothing is supposed to happen to us. Listen to me. We are in the world. And Yeshua said, in this world, you will have trials and tribulations. But he will go with you through it. You are not going to go around it. You are not going to go over it. You're going to go through it. And when you go through it, you will see the victory. Because this is how you fight your battle. Come on, man. man when I was saying this morning, I said, man, these guys saying everything that I can preach. That's good. Just, just go for it. So the first thing that I realized that the Shua did when he heard bad news, listen to, look to the next verse 4. When Yeshua heard this, he did not say, oh, Father God, why did you let this happen? It's, he's my friend. If I was there, he wouldn't have been. He didn't do that. The first thing that Yeshua did when he heard this news, he replied and he said with his mouth, so what I'm finding is here yeah, that when he was told bad news, he reacted by saying back, hey, he just spoke immediately. This sickness will not end in death. It is for God's glory. So that Elohim may be glorified through it. And I thought to myself, listen to me, guys. Whatever that old slipfoot devil that comes to steal, kill, and destroy wants to give you some bad news. The Bible says where two of you agree on earth concerning anything, you can have that. And sometimes we agree with what the enemy says and not what the Word of God says. If the word of God says you are healed by his stripes and the devil says, well, you are sick and you're going to die, you tell him to shut your face and get behind me, Satan. Because the word says, when that devil tells you your wife's going to leave you, your marriage is going to break up, you tell him, no, it's not going to happen. When he tells you your son's going to die because of drugs, you say, no, my son's going to get healed. And I realized 
that if, if you get bad news, the first thing that you should do is not agree with the bad news, but speak against it. Find a scripture and speak against it. What Yeshua did? No, the sickness is not unto death. He's not going to die. It's for going to be to the glory of God. Now, Yeshua didn't immediately leave. He didn't say that Lazarus was, Lazarus was not sick. He did not deny that he was sick. When you got the COVID, nothing would help you to say, well, I don't have it. No, Baba, you had it. And you felt it. It's no use denying something because denying something is not going to heal you. You know what's going to heal you? The Word of God is going to heal you. That what comes out of your spirit, man. What is inside of you that when something bad happens to you, that you will rather agree with what the Word says than what the enemy says? Oh, boy, and we have so many scriptures that we can use in that area. So, Jesus, what was Jesus, uh, uh, Yeshua doing when he said, the sickness is not unto death. It's for the glory of God. He was basically sending his Word ahead of himself before he left and before he went to Lazarus. He was sending his word. That's what Psalms 107 says, verse 20. Is he sent his word and healed us. So if you and I have a problem and we encounter a problem and we hear bad news, something can happen, something can go wrong, the first thing I don't agree with what, the, what they're saying, and you reply with the word of God. You reply with the answer that is in the word, not, the, not what the devil says. Yeah, but Hansi, it's a fact. When, when the doctor told you that you had cancer, it was a fact. Yeah, it was a fact. But you know what nullifies the fact? Must I tell you what can nullify the fact? The truth. The truth will nullify a fact. And that's whatever the fact is. If you speak the truth, you will be set free. You can have victory. So there comes Yeshua. He hears the bad news. And he does not deny the fact that, that the sickness is there. But he spoke the healing. He spoke the truth. And he canceled the fact. Did you know that Yeshua knew that he was going to die? Go to verse 11 with me. After he had said this, he told the disciples, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he has fallen asleep, he will get better. Now Yeshua had spoken about his death, but they thought that he was taking a Sunday night cap. A night cap. They thought he was sleeping, but Yeshua was speaking about his death. Is everybody with me? Then Yeshua, Yeshua told them clearly in verse 14, you bunch of dumb, blonde disciples. You see, Yeshua never said he's going to die because nothing negative ever came out of Yeshua's mouth. What comes out of your mouth? How are you talking? The first little thing that goes wrong, oh, well, I was expecting that. I knew that was going to happen. Well, I just went to the doctor, and they tested my heart. And as I thought, my grandfather's got heart problems. My father's got heart problems. Now the doctor tells me I've got heart problems, so I'm just going to wait and die from a heart attack. Well, then, Baba, you die from a heart attack, but I'm not going to die from a heart attack. I'm going to break that curse in the name of Yeshua. That generational curse. You, because my father, my father, my grandfather died. I don't have to die. Yeah, but it's DNA. I know, but I got the blood of Yeshua that can wash that free. I've got a promise. So Yeshua never wanted to say, hey, oh, guys, Lazarus is, Lazarus is going to die. But eventually he had to say to them, hey, then Yeshua told them clearly, Lazarus is dead. He's not sleeping. But I'm glad for your sake I wasn't there so that you now may believe. Anyway, let's go to him. So there goes Yeshua and there goes the disciples. 
and they get to the tomb where Lazarus was lying. On the way, he met Martha and, and, and spoke to her. And I'm not going to read through, through all that. He gets there, and he starts crying. Jesus wept. Yeshua wept. It's okay to cry. If you hear bad news or something's wrong, when I had that cancer and I was crying so much, I after a while thought, I said, oh, Father, am I a sissy or what? And he said, no, well, if, you, if you're a sissy, then you're calling Yeshua a sissy as well. No, it's an emotion. Cry. Get it out of you. If you have to cry, cry. Nothing wrong with crying. So the people that stood around there, the negative bunch, you know what, what they said. <laughs> Look at him crying. Couldn't this man who raised people from the dead heal the sick? Couldn't he have stopped this? You see, and that's what an attitude is in the church today. It's almost an attitude like, where is the Father God? Where is Yahweh? Where, where is Yeshua? Why, why didn't he stop this? Why didn't he do that? Listen, we're living in a world, I'm telling you again. You are going to face problems. But thank heavens you have the name of Yeshua. You have the blood of Yeshua. You have the word of Yahweh, which is the power unto salvation, Romans chapter 1, 17 or 16. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of, of Yeshua. It is the power of Yahweh unto salvation. We got the Holy Spirit, which is the most unused spirit ever, because every single one of you sitting here, when Yeshua said in, in, in John 14, 12, he said, if you believe in me, you will do exactly what I did, and you will do even greater works than I did. Pastor Mark, my question is, why is the church not standing up and doing greater works and doing even what Yeshua did? Now listen to what Yeshua said. If you believe in me. So my question is, do you believe in Yeshua? Why aren't you doing those works? We sing about it. We talk about it, but the church is waiting for somebody to come and do it. And every single person in this church and in every other church has got the same Holy Spirit that Yeshua had. I don't know what else we want. If you say, in the name of Yeshua, every knee should bow. When you, hey, we, we, you remember we used to sing the old song? There's power, power, wonder working power in the blood, but we don't use it. Mm. We never apply the blood. <laughs> For some other reason, we just want Yahweh to do everything. And he said, I've done everything. I sent you Yeshua. I gave you everything. I gave you authority on this earth. You reign on this earth. Isn't that what he said? So these negative guys say, why could Yeshua not have stopped this? Oh, my goodness. It's so, you always get your negative people, always trying to be funny. So. Verse 38, so Yeshua, again deeply troubled with himself, comes to the tomb of the cave. So, all right, let's just go back. When he heard the bad news, he did not agree with it. He spoke against it. He never wanted to say the word dead until the disciples basically made him say, listen, are you guys stupid? He's dead. Then he comes to the tomb where the problem is. All right? So Yeshua said, this sickness is not unto death. But when he gets to the tomb, Lazarus is dead. See, and this is where the world says we are wacko. Because you're saying it's not going to happen, and then it happens. Well, listen, by saying something's not going to happen is just faith. 
You are calling those things that are not as if though they are. You are speaking that which is not as if though it is. But even if you get there and it does happen, you don't have to go lie down and say, well, it didn't work now. Yeshua didn't say, well, sorry, guys. I said Lazarus wasn't going to die. The sickness is not of the death, but the guy's gone. Maybe I just made a mistake. He didn't do that. He got to the problem and he faced the problem. So sometimes when you say, how am I going to get the COVID? How am I going to get the COVID? And you get the COVID. Don't think that, well, well why did Yeshua, what? don't give, give Yeshua and, 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 and Father God the, 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 the cause to say that they wrong. Let's just look at this whole situation. I'm still one of those guys that believe that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yahweh is not a stealer. He's a healer. But I have a problem with the next few scriptures because what you and I usually do when we say something's not going to happen and then it happens, then we go into a frenzy. And then I hear so many people, they start, the first thing that people do is they start praying. They start crying out. And what they usually, the way they usually cry out is they start begging Yahweh and they don't understand Yahweh and what's wrong Yahweh and, and, and all that and, and all that way. And I thought, when Yeshua got to the problem, the first thing that he did was not pray. I mean, you know, what was the first thing that he did when he got to the tomb? Move the stone. Roll away the stone. That's the first thing that he did. And I said, okay, Father, why did he do that? <laughs> and the father said, are you a blonde? <laughs> I said, no. He said, well, did Yeshua raise Lazarus from the dead? Yeah. He said, so if Yeshua had got to the tomb, yes, Yeshua, and there's the tomb. If he had got to the tomb and he had said, Lazarus, come out. You know what would have happened? Lazarus would have stood up, and you all know how he was bound up, right? He was all bound up in, in grave clothes like a mummy. And Lazarus would have got up and walked to the entrance. And Yeshua would have said, Lazarus, I said, come out. And Lazarus would have come to the door and went, I can't come out. There's a stone in the way. I'm getting this. So obviously, he had to roll away the stone before he commanded him to rise from the dead. Because otherwise, he would have rose from the dead, walked to the entrance, but he couldn't get out because there was a stone blocking it. And Yeshua would have said, come on, Lazarus, come out. And the people would have said, Father is not hearing Jesus' prayer. Yahweh is not answering Yeshua. Because Yeshua is saying, come out, Lazarus, but we're not seeing no prayer answered. How many of you have prayed? And you still be, be honest with me this morning. However, you have prayed for some issue in your life, and you still need Yahweh to answer that prayer. Put up your hand. Come on. Most of us. Can I change that this morning? Because I thought of myself. Some of us are waiting, still waiting, for Yahweh to answer your prayer. But maybe he has answered your prayer. But you cannot see the manifestation of that answered prayer yet. Why? Because maybe there's a stone in front of your situation that you have not removed. Maybe you are praying for a situation and Yahweh said, yeah, I will bring that thing up, I will fix that problem for you, but you cannot see it because there's still a stone. And I said, 
Father, what, what are you talking about stones? He said, well, Hansi, they are stones that you and I got to roll out of our lives. Because the stone was a hindrance. It was a blockage from seeing what's behind it and seeing that Yahweh might have answered the prayer, but you will never see that prayer answered. And he's already answered because you still got this blockage in front. So I sat down and I looked at all the blockages in our lives. What can block your prayer manifestation of your answered prayer? Listen to what I'm saying. The manifestation of your answered prayer, what's blocking it that you cannot see it? Well, let me give you a few examples. Disobedience, complaining, unforgiveness, willful sin in your life. Rebellion, rejection, unbelief, fear. Come on. The I can't words, I don't understand words, doesn't make sense words. Those things shouldn't come out of a child of God's mouth. You should never ever say, I don't understand, I, and it doesn't make sense, I cannot. Yes, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And the word tells me what, what the answer is, not what I'm saying. Disagreements. Worry, anger, pride, stress. Come on, there's many, many stones that can block you from seeing that your prayer was answered. But let, me, let me give you, Hansi, give me an example. Okay, I'm sure. I'm glad you asked me to. Father, now hang on, hang on, hang on. Do you believe that when you pray to the Father that he will answer your prayer? Does he always hear our prayers? Does he always answer our prayers? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to answer yes or no or wait. <laughs> we like the yes. We don't like the no. And we hate the wait. Because the wait is yes, but just not the right time now. And sometimes he does answer the prayer, and you say, well, he didn't answer my prayer because you've got to wait. But duh, if you, if you had married that woman when you wanted to, you would have been divorced five times already. If you had got that job that you wanted and wanted, and God said, it's the wrong time now, I'll give it to you in six months' time, you weren't ready for that job, you would have been fired. And we don't understand that, hey, as the righteous, our steps are guided. By Yahweh, come on. He knows what is best for you and I. All right? So I believe he does. Let me just give you a scripture or two just to make sure that you are with me. John 14, 13 and 14. And Yeshua said to them, Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And they say, now you're quiet. Did you hear what Yeshua said there? What anything that you ask in my name, I will do it. Father, in the name of Yeshua, please heal me. The Bible says he'll do it. I'm not saying it. Do you believe the word? Well, then you've got to believe that. John 16, 23. And in that day, Yeshua said, when I go to my father, in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. So, Hansi, I can say to the Father, that don't be dumb. Father, Hansi said that whatever I ask you, Father, Yahweh, in the name of Yeshua, you will do. So, Father, in the name of Yeshua, this afternoon, 5 o'clock, $1 million at my front door. Thank you, sir. You can't do that. Why? Because First John 5, 15 says, this is the confidence that we have in him. That whatever we ask according to his will, whatever you ask in the name of the Father, and the Father in the name of Yeshua, he will do. That's what he says. So. 
according to his will, if there is a promise that you and I have, we can ask the Father. Then we just, we're going to get a yes, we're going to get a no, I don't want to do that. Or we're going to say, yeah, it's going to happen, but just wait. Right. So, here we are. You promise, you, something happened, you did not agree, you're speaking against it, you're not believing it, and you get to the problem, and the problem happened. That what you said was not going to happen has now happened. What do you do now? You don't pray the first thing. You first remove the stones. Because otherwise, Yahweh will hear your prayer and you won't see it, maybe. So let's take an example. Father, in the name of Yeshua, they tell me that I got cancer, lung cancer. I'm asking you, in the name of Yeshua, heal me. According to what I've just said now, he's got to heal you. Right? I will do that. So I believe, and I believe it's the will of the Father to heal people. So here comes that cancer rises up, and Yeshua said, I will heal you. Even if you go through the treatment, doesn't matter, doctors or no doctors, he's going to heal you. That's what Yeshua died for, for our sicknesses. Now, we don't see the healing. Now we start thinking, why is the Father not hearing our prayers? Well, what stone is in front there that's stopping you? Maybe the stone of unbelief. Maybe you know that Yeshua can do it, and the Father has heard your prayer, and he wants to hear it. But you wonder, man, why is it taking so long? You know, I've still got to go through these treatments. And, and the doctor says, I'm not getting better. So now you start fearing, and you start un unbelieving, and maybe you've got a stone of doubt. You've got three stones there, Baba, that you've got to roll away. The Father wants to heal you, but your doubt and your unbelief and your fear is stopping you from seeing that you are healed. Father, in the name of Yeshua, I have financial problems. Would you please fix my finances? The Father says, for sure, I want to prosper you financially, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Yes, there it goes. Your finances are raised up. In the, in, in the spiritual realm, the Father's done that. In the spiritual realm, the Father's healed you. But you won't see your finances growing or getting better because you know why? Because you've got a disobedience stone. You're not paying your tithes. And the word says, pay your tithes. Yeah, but I can't pay my tithes because what is Pastor Mark going to do with that, all that money? Maybe he buys a Chevrolet like Brother Hunsey. You still driving that old Ford? You driving Chevrolet now? That's why this whole church feels different. The music is different. Everything different. This is a saved church. Oh, my goodness. My brother, I'm so glad you heard Yahweh say, Chevrolet, Chevrolet. Every night, I know you heard those voices. Mm -hmm. That disobedient stone, yeah, you, you rolled that away. <laughs> Father, in the name of Yeshua, my marriage, come on, Yahweh, I'm married to this woman for 25 years. I cannot, no, she cannot divorce me now. Yahweh says, I hate divorce. I want to raise up and fix your marriage. But why you got a stone of pornography? Why you got a stone of adultery, of lust? Why are you looking at other women? You've got to fix your marriage. Your marriage will never get fixed. You first got to get rid of those stones. Come on. Get rid of that fear, of that, uh, that disobedience, that whatever, willful sin. That we, come on, I can keep on giving you um, example after example. Oh, my, so Yeshua said, listen, let's take away the stone. You know what Martha said? Lord, we can't take away the stone. He's dead for four days. There'll be a stench. You're going you're to smell, man, bad. Tell me, you know why some people don't want to take away the stone? They're afraid what other people are going to smell. Oh, you're a board member? You play the guitar and you sing? 
Jerry. I'm just taking an example. I don't want to take my real brother's name. And you're not paying tithes? And then you come out, yeah, I haven't been paying tithes for two years. But how can you play in the band? How could you be a board member? How could you be one of the elders? And you're not paying tithes. They're so afraid of what people are going to say afterwards. Who cares what people say afterwards? Come out and repent and confess and say what you've done wrong. And come on, fix this problem. Why? Because you want to see your prayer that's answered manifest. You know what? You and I should not be blocking our answered prayers from manifesting. And that's when I realized, hey, if God says no, it's no. But if God says yes, and I'm not going to see it, how stupid am I blocking my own prayer that I prayed, the answering of that prayer through a stone that I'm blocking that I don't want to give up or that I'm afraid that people might hear what I did wrong. You know how many people live in fear? And they're afraid to say, I'm afraid. Come on, come out and say, pray for me. I'm afraid of the stupid COVID. I know everybody's got some kind of a fear, but listen, you don't have to be afraid of the stupid thing. God is greater than that thing. Yeah, and I know people die, but people die from the flu as well. They die from cigarette smoking as well. You ask God to heal your lung cancer, but you're smoking. You'll never get healed. People don't want to get away that stench. Secondly, you know why people don't want to roll away the stone? Because it's not easy. If you've got fear or unforgiveness or hatred towards people to roll that because you were abused when you were five years old by a man that was 30 years old, sexually abused. You know how hard that is for that five-year-old that is now 30, 40 years old to forgive that man? It's not easy. It's not just a flick of a finger. Oh, and there goes unforgiveness. A flick of a finger, and there goes fear. Somebody said to me other than, but unforgiveness is so hard. I said, I know it's hard. But hey, why? Because there's a price that you pay when you've got to forgive people. Yeshua sweated blood and went to a cross and paid a price so you and I could be forgiven. But you and I don't have to go to a cross. Yeshua already did that. You just got to get rid of the pain and the hatred and the, un and, and the malice in your heart and forgive this person and keep on speaking. I forgive him. I forgive him. Man, I wish, wish I could bump him in the face and kick him. No, 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 Lord. No, I'm sorry, Father. I'm saying I'm sorry. I forgive him. I forgive him. And keep on saying it until one day when you walk, you see the guy in, in the street and you look at him and think, I don't want to punch the guy anymore. No but you got to do it because if you don't forgive him, then the Father won't forgive you. You, you all know that. Come on. When Yeshua said, roll away the stone, you, you didn't have a guy walking up there pushing a button. And there goes the stone. You know how the stone was rolled away? You had those big Roman soldiers, and that thing weighed about a ton. They put those big poles in there, and, and they rolled that stone away. So when you have a stone of fear or disobedience or unforgiveness or something, you need some big muscle man Christian brothers and sisters that can stand with you and say, come on, we're going to beat this thing. We're going to roll this thing away. Come on, church. We want our prayers that are answered. We want to see. Hey, that's why you pray. So your prayers could be answered. But you cannot pray, Father, please save my husband. Oh, oh Lord, I'm, I'm begging you. Whatever you do, and ne never beg. N never beg Yahweh. Why do you want to beg him? Just ask him. The Bible never says we must beg. Just ask him in the name of Yeshua, and he will do it. Ask him to save your husband. But now it doesn't look like it. And No, come on. Help, let somebody come and say, what's wrong? What's wrong? Well, I'm afraid he's not going to get saved. Oh, I don't think he's going to get saved. No, let's break that fear with you, pray with you, and, and roll that stone away with you. Instead of convict, uh, condemning the people that were disobedient or that are smoking or that have got a problem, help them and pray them through this thing and roll that stone away with it. Because when you have a stone one day, you're going to have some big muscle man Christians to help you as well. Boy, and they roll away that stone. <laughs> and guess what happens next? 
Then Yeshua prays. Then he prays. And you know how he prays? Not like you and I pray. Oh, Father, and we roll out this whole big fancy thing. And we beg. Did you know, just for the interest sake, and I know this is going to hit some of your theology maybe uh, or your tradition. Yeshua never prayed for anybody. Father, would you heal Pastor Mark? He never did that. He always said, Pastor Mark, what do you want? And Pastor Mark said, I'm blind. I want to see. He said, go, your faith has healed you. Everywhere. Go, go read the New Testament. And I said to Yahweh, I said, so Jesus never asked you anything, Father? He said, no, he did. But he asked me when he was on his own. When he prayed on the mountains and when he was in his prayer, that's when he asked me. Man, and I got another example, and I do that, and I've had success with that. Before I come to a meeting like this, last night, this morning, guess what was my prayer? Father, I'm asking you in the name of Yeshua, and you said whatever I ask you in the name of Yeshua, you will do. People will get saved. People will get healed. People will get delivered. People will be get set free in Yeshua's name this morning. And now I apply the prayer of faith, and I accept that what I cannot see yet. And I speak that that I cannot see yet. And I said with my mouth this morning, this morning, people will get saved, set free, healed, and delivered. Even if it's one, even if it's somebody over the internet, I don't care. I've asked God. I've accepted. I've spoken it. Now, when you come out here after this, this is how I pray, just like Yeshua did. Father, thank you. Come on, read it there. Read it there. He said, so they roll away the stone, verse 41. Yeshua lifted up his eyes, and then he prayed and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. Man, I wish you could get this in your spirit, man. Because then you'll stop worrying and moaning and griping and, 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 and oh, what's going on? Why isn't you, Yahweh hear me? Father, thank you that you've already heard me, the prayer that I prayed. Thank you that you always hear me. Say that with this. Say, thank you, Father, that you hear my prayers. I know that you always hear me. That was his prayer. You know, you know I mean, there's an asking prayer. There's a conviction prayer. There's an con uh, uh, intercession prayer. There's a thanksgiving prayer. And he had already prayed for the resurrection of Lazarus. Now he's just thanking him. I know that you've heard me. And I thank you that you always hear me. So that's why you'll never hear me when I pray for people here. Father, I ask you to heal, sister so-and-so. Father, I ask you. No, I've already done that. And listen, church, if you come to church this morning and next uh, Saturday, and you come to church with an attitude of, this morning I'm going to be prayed for, and this morning I'm going to get healed. This morning I'm going to come out there and give my husband and Pastor Mark to agree with me, and my husband's going to get saved. Then you got already got a prayer of faith, asked, accepted, you agree, you thank Yahweh that's going to happen, Pastor Mark comes, and you agree, and you both say, Thank you, Lord, that it's done. We don't see it. We don't feel it, but we believe it. It's going to happen. Man, there'll be a powerhouse prayer right there, and that's when we will see miracles. And I will always thank the Lord that you are healed because I've already asked him. I need you to come to church with the same attitude that when I come to church, I'm going to get healed because I've already asked. And when I'm here, it's done. Come on. Don't look at me with those funny eyes. I'm, it's, it's not what I'm saying. It's what Yeshua's doing. He said, I, I know that you always hear me, but because of this crowd standing around, I said, so that it, I said it so that they may believe that you sent me. So he first rolled away the stone. Then he prayed a thanksgiving prayer. And guess what happens next? Then he, you could call it 
the next prayer that he prayed or the commandment that he made because he had authority of the Holy Spirit to tell a dead man to stand up. And he didn't say, oh, please, Lazzy, Lazarus, come on, man. You've got to do this, man. Otherwise, I'm going to look stupid here. you got to come out. Father, you've got to help me. And no, he said, Lazarus, come forth in authority and in power. Cancer, I command you in Yeshua's name, get out of my body. Rebellion spirit in my home with my children, I command you in the name of Yeshua, get out. That adultery pornography spirit in my house that my, my, my husband's watching, in the name of Yeshua, I break that over his body, over his mind. Whatever it is, you see, we become marshmallow Christians. It's like the devil's trampling on us. I don't know about you. I'm not under his feet. He's under my feet. What was that old song? I went to the enemy's camp. Remember that old song? He's under my feet. He's under my feet. That's an old song, but I mean, it still, it still makes sense. That the devil and his demons, Yeshua gave all the disciples in Luke 10, 19. He gave them authority and power to trample on serpents and scorpions, which represents demons, and power over all the power of the enemy. You and I are sitting here has got power over the enemy. You know what the big uh, uh, um, problem is that I found out the other day? Man, Yahweh showed me this. He said, I, I was looking at the armor of God. Uh, and he said to me, Hansi, do you realize that you have a shield of faith that quenches all the fiery darts of the devil? So when the devil comes and those demons attack you, you just put that invisible shield of faith, which is the word of God, which creates faith. Man, you just hold it there. Bang, bang, bang. Those arrows will just fly off, man. I said, yeah, I know that, Father. I know that. He said, but you know how, how, what you don't know? I said, no. He said, when you retaliate and you attack the enemy, do you realize he doesn't have a shield? He's got a few arrows that he's shooting at you. You've got the whole full armor of God, which one of the, one of the great weapons is the, is the shield of faith, and you can shield yourself and protect yourself. The devil doesn't have anything to protect himself with. And we still, well, I don't know, I don't know if the word will work against the devil. If I saw, I, I don't believe this. Hey, you and I got more weapons and more stronger, greater weapons than, than he is. And when you say in the name of Yeshua, he's got no shield to protect himself. He's got to drop his hands, turn around, and leave. He might come back at an opportune time. That's what happened in the desert after three times that Jesus, uh, the, uh, 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 Yeshua said to the devil, it is written, it is written. And he left until an opportune time. Where am I? Is my time. I've got to finish up here. Oh, goodness, thank you, Lord. And he said, come on. Will you start, please, using your authority and commanding whatever is dead, whatever is that problem is, that problem to be fixed, will you start commanding in the name of Yeshua and commanding that thing after you've removed all the obstacles and the stones out of the way? Thank Yeshua for what he's done. Thank you, Father, that he hears your prayers. And then you take authority and you take commandment, and you speak that life over that situation because he's given you that authority and that power in your house, in your church, wherever you go. That doesn't mean you'll never be attacked. That doesn't mean you will never get a flat tire. Yeah, you will. Just don't do what some Christians do. They look around and kick that thing and start cussing and cursing, you know, and then say, I wasn't cursing, I was speaking in tongues. All right. And he commanded that Lazarus to come out, who had been dead. And he came out wrapped in burial clothes, bringing his hands and feet with cloth all over his face. And Yeshua said to them, cut him loose and let him go. I don't know about you. I want Yeshua 
to cut loose all the bondages that I'm bound up in. And there's a lot of Christians, a lot of believers that are bound up. They're bound up in areas in their lives that they shouldn't be bound up. And they're praying about it. They're praying about it. They're praying about it. And I found out the other day when Yeshua came and there was that fig tree and there was no fruit on it. He said, you will never bear fruit again. And the next day, Peter said, oh, Rabbi, look. The tree that you cursed from the root has died. And the father said to me, you know what you do sometimes, you preachers and you people? People come out and they say, oh, I'm smoking. I want to stop smoking. Oh, I've got fear and so forth. And we start cutting off the fruit of that tree. And then you go home and you feel better. And two, day, two weeks later, you come back. No, I've gone back into it again. I'm drinking again. I'm drugging again. I'm smoking. I don't know what's wrong. And then we cut off the fruit. We just pray off the fruit. He said to me, get that root out. Because when you get to the root of the problem, the whole tree will be destroyed. And there won't be fruit, no, ever again. And your prayer will be answered. But you've got to get the, all those stuff out. Now listen to me. If you have rolled away the stones, and, you, and your prayer isn't answered immediately, now don't say, Brother Hansi was a liar. That means, in, I, said, I said, Father, what happens if I ask you something in Jesus' name, I make sure all the stones are rolled away, and I don't see, still don't see the manifestation of my prayer. Then the Father said to me, then you wait, because that means I've heard your prayer, but that's not the right time. It will happen. There's my own wife that has been sick for many, many years after she fell on her head. She could not get on the stage and sing with me. She could not sit on a chair like this, and then she wants to fall off. And last year, God healed her ears, and she's back on the stage with me singing, and she's sitting on the, on, on the chair. It took me many years, but I never stopped. I roll, I, you know, because once you roll away the stone, it's going to be rolled back by the devil again. And then you roll away fear, and then he puts worry in front of you. And then you roll away worry, then he puts stress in front of you. He just never stops. He, he can't get you to hell, but he'll torment you and trial you the whole time that you're on earth. But hey, that's why we come here. That's why we worship. That's why we praise. And that's why we do what we do. And we keep on fighting that good fight of faith. And you don't stop. You never, ever give up. Listen to me carefully. I know there's some of you sitting here that are healed and that have gone through what I've gone through with the cancer and with Jeanette going through her surgery and stuff. We know we fight the fight of faith. You don't give up. If it's your time, you'll go. But what's the other song that Elevation is singing? If I'm not dead, God's not done. That's my testimony. From death to life. Uh -huh. And I'm not dead and you're not dead. So put that lion in those lungs and start praising and worshiping and thanking Yahweh for who you are and what you are. Amen. Birkat HaKonim, the blessing of the priest. Yevarechecha Adonai Veishmerecha Yair Adonai Panav Elecha Vihuneka Yes, Adonai, Panav Elecha, Veyasem Lecha, Lecha Shalom. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up his face to you and give you shalom. Amen. And it's time again for the Kiddush. The blessing over the wine. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Pri HaGafen, Amen. Blessed are you, Yahweh Elohim, King of the universe, 
who creates the fruit of the vine, and for giving us, Yeshua the Messiah, who said, I am the vine, you are the branches. And the blessing over the bread. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, hamoti lechem min haaret. Amen. Blessed are you, O Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth, and for giving us Yeshua the Messiah, who said, I am the bread of life. It is Shabbat, thank the Lord. It is Shabbat. 